I really appreciate all of the questions that you guys leave on my videos. That not only helps me understand what type of content you would like to see, but it helps me learn new things each and every day on Subarus. Today, I want to go over some common questions I get here that I don't always have the ability to answer in the comment section below, or I don't have the ability to really elaborate effectively in the comments. So keep the questions coming. I'll try my best to answer those for you guys. Maybe if you guys like this style of content, I'll try to do these once a week or once every few weeks. By the way, if you're new to my channel, my name is Alex and I work for a Subaru retailer. So I get a lot of training on Subaru vehicles in general and I drive one myself, so I learn a lot about them. So if you have questions about a Subaru, feel free to reach out to me, I'll be happy to help you. If you guys learned something new and get value out of this video, I'd really appreciate it if you click the like button, that really helps me out. And if you guys would like to see more videos like this, click on the subscribe button down below. Our first question comes from GR Cigar 99 one one appreciate this type of content but also wouldn't mind some general updates on where things stand with trying to get a subaru here in 2023 i have heard of people with outstanding orders going back to early last fall even for those vehicles built in indiana delivery dates keep getting bumped month after month what are the factors causing these delays and what does the outlook look like going forward continued delays or expected improvements. There's a lot to this question here. What I will tell you, especially if you're not familiar with it, if you live here in the US, if it's a vehicle that's manufactured in the Lafayette, Indiana plant, those typically get to us sooner, or at least they do here for us in Louisville, Kentucky, because we're so close to it. So the Outbacks, the Legacies, the Ascents, when those are manufactured, if we order one of those vehicles, they get to us much sooner than our Japanese manufactured Subarus like the Foresters or the Crosstreks. And I think the Crosstrek, at least half their lineup for this year is going to be moved to the US plant. So that's going to help with getting some of the Crosstreks if you're intending to order one. In terms of the delays, I don't see it that often, but I have seen some delays here recently. Back in fall, if you had ordered a, an Outback, if you were trying to get a 2023, you were probably impacted by the stop sale. So that was a, a uh, an anomaly, really. It's not something that happens very often, but that put the Outbacks on delay. So for those vehicles in Indiana, uh, including my own. But now if you try to order a Forester or a Crosstrek, you're still seeing some delays. And my only guess is that it's because those have a much further distance to travel. So once they are completely put together and built in Japan, they come to the US and they travel by boat, by train, by truck until they get here. And there's a lot of things that can go wrong during each segment of, of traveling to us. And so one of those is just to give you an example, a few days ago, I had a cross trek that was delayed by over a week. And a lot of that ended up having to do with the trucking company. One of the trucks had broken down. So those are things that happen. Nobody can control them. Or you have the weather like today here in Kentucky, we had like a like a sleet or almost like an ice storm last night. So that causes delays and trucks are either unable to drive or there's traffic or, or further delays along the way. And that's just one area. So obviously when they're being loaded on the trains or being loaded on the boats, there could be delays there as well. And so Subaru gives us a month when they, uh, they call it their promise month, when the vehicle is expected to arrive when you order it, but it's just an estimate, it's not an exact. So right now, if I order a Forester or a Crosstrek, those vehicles have a projected ETA of month of March, but realistically, they could come in April as well. We don't fully know, and we unfortunately don't have any control over it. It's just when the vehicle arrives. Now, what I do for customers is when they order a vehicle, I don't just order the car and then not talk to them until their car comes in in that month. I try to keep them updated every few weeks with any information that we get from Subaru, which is not a whole lot. But as we get closer to the updated arrival date or the day when the vehicle is supposed to arrive, we get a more definitive ETA. So for example, those vehicles coming in March, they may update it in a few weeks from now and tell us that they're gonna be arriving approximately on March 25th, but that is still no guarantee. That's just a, a giving us a better idea on when to expect that so we can prepare and get things in order for our customers. The next part of your question asks, 
do I see this getting any better? Are there going to be improvements? Or are we going to continue seeing delays? And to answer that, I think that we will start seeing improvements in 2023. So this is probably going to happen because of consumer demand. Now, right now, there's still a lot of demand for Subarus, even compared to some of the other vehicles out there that maybe are not as good on gas, not as reliable, or a much higher price. Subarus have a lot of value. They're at a decent price compared to other vehicles out there in the market, and they have a lot to offer. So because of that, even with rising interest rates, we are still seeing a lot of demand. And to this day, we still sell out of our inventory pretty much before it arrives at the dealership. Now, I can't predict what's going to happen in the, in the future, but what I can tell you is I have seen a little bit of pullback from customers who are buying and ordering new Subarus. Not as many orders are going in, and uh, we are still selling them quite fast, and we're still selling out of our inventory but that probably has a lot to do with interest rates. So people are either not buying as many or the people who are buying are not financing 100% of the car. They're, they're, they're putting a lot down. So they may only be financing half the, the car. They might be, be putting 50% cash down for that car. Or instead of doing a 60 or 72 month, they might be doing a 48 term month to get a to take advantage of potentially a lower interest rate. So those are some of the things I'm seeing in the market. I am seeing a little bit of a pullback. There is still quite a bit of demand, but we sell other vehicles here at the dealership. And if you look at our trucks or some of those higher priced vehicles that maybe aren't as good on gas, we are seeing the demand drop on those vehicles. And I think this is primarily due to the interest rates. So we'll look at that if interest rates keep going up throughout the rest of the year if the the federal reserve if they keep raising that benchmark rate then i think demand for vehicles will start coming down and then that will allow allow supply to catch up with demand and therefore make it so that vehicles arrive to the lot without getting sold and you don't have to rely on ordering a car they will arrive and uh, you'll have some selection to actually choose from trek king asks when will we get a cross trek wilderness edition i actually don't know for sure, we are going to be releasing the 2024 Crosstrek on February 9th at the Chicago Auto Show. So hopefully they release some details on that then, but I don't know if they're going to be releasing that. We're going to find out then on what's coming for the 2024 Crosstrek then. So stay tuned because I'm going to be covering some of those details as soon as they are released. M.E. Behringer asks, can you get heated front seats in the base model? Unfortunately, no. The base model kind of comes bare bones. You don't get all the fancy features with it. The base model is the only Subaru model that you don't get heated seats. So if you go with any trim level above the base, you're going to have heated seats by default on Subaru models. I'm not even going to begin to try to pronounce the name on this one, but they ask, is the Sports trim water repellent like the Wilderness trim Forester? The Forester Sport trim level has cloth interior, so it is not water repellent. The only water repellent seats that Subaru makes are the StarTech seats, and those are only in the Forester Wilderness, the Outback Wilderness, and the Onyx Outback. V Stan asked, what's the dog's name? Our dog's name is Cleo. She's about seven months old, and she actually just had surgery. We got her spayed, so she's been recovering the last few days, but she's as energetic as ever. She doesn't even act like she had surgery right now. I mean, it's crazy how quickly she has rebounded from this. Next question comes from R4 Racing. Would the Remote Star app work on a 2018 Subaru Legacy? No, from my understanding, the remote start does not work on that old of a Subaru. First, you have to have the keyless entry with push button start, which the older models do. But starting in 2020, I know is when that was first initiated for the Legacy and Outbacks. I'm not sure on all the other models, but I know that if it's 2020 or newer Subaru with keyless entry and push button start, that it will have the ability to have remote start through the mobile app. Now, if you don't have the ability because your car is older, you do still have the option to have remote start through more traditional means like actually getting a second key fob. That is an added option through Subaru and you do have to have that programmed and you have to purchase a specific key fob for it. So it does cost uh, quite a bit. It's like $800 give or take depending on which retailer installs it, but that is an option for for you you just unfortunately with that old of a vehicle don't have the ability to do it through the mobile app drift 4647 asks how do you turn off the seatbelt chime in the front seats and back seats unfortunately there is not a factory off switch for the seatbelt chime and i'm sure this has something to do with uh, liability for subaru they create very safe vehicles and one thing that they can do to help somebody be safe is by 
having a seatbelt on. Unfortunately, these are not perfect, so they're weight sensitive. And if you have a dog or somebody in the back or maybe a heavy backpack or something like that, that weight is going to make the seatbelt chime go off because it's not activated. Now, if you just have a bag there or you have books or, or something there that is causing that sensor to go off, you could simply just put click the seatbelt in place but obviously don't do that. Don't encourage somebody if they're sitting in the seat to not put their seatbelt on because if you do get in an accident, that puts them at risk of, of getting hurt. So no, there is no way from the factory to turn this off. I know that there's aftermarket things out there that people have done and you can scour the internet and find YouTube videos on people doing weird clicks and tricks with the seatbelt clicking, but that is not something that I would recommend doing because of the liability that that would uh, cause. So no, unfortunately there's not a way. I do understand the frustration and how it could be annoying. Uh, our dog, when she's in the back, that's done that. But our workaround with that is we put this seat down. So that way if she's back there, she's on the back of the seat. And when the, the back seat is down, it's not going off. And then she's in her crate anyways, so she's not roaming around. This next question is kind of along the same lines there from the Fox Barrow, they asked, any way to turn off engine restart completely, like forever, LOL, seriously. Again, I can understand your frustration with the auto start stop system. I used to have a pretty unreliable car or truck. It was a Ford Ranger, really old one in 1998. And it would shut off at complete stops at stop signs because of low idling. So there was something going on with the truck. So whenever I got my, my car after that, the Honda CRZ that I replaced it with, that had a, by default auto start stop on it as well, which if you're unfamiliar with, it shuts the engine off at complete stops to save on fuel. So as you can imagine that at first, whenever I wasn't used to it, it would make me nervous or scare me kind of at stop signs. It would make my stomach drop, making me think that my car had just shut off. All Subarus now, unfortunately, most of your modern ones are going to have, and most modern cars are going to have this auto start stop feature that is there to save on fuel. And the manufacturer puts that there to have a better fuel rating. The only way around it that the factory or Subaru gives you is an on off switch inside the car. So now they make it pretty easy, depending on the car you have, it's just right on the home screen display or on the dash that you just touch a button and turn it off. For example, on the Outback, you can quickly turn it off right here each time you get in the car. On the Foresters and some of our other models, there's a button over here you click and it shuts it off. And you have to turn it off each time you get in the car. So I can understand how that can be annoying each time, but it's something that you kind of learn to live with. I, I've had a car for now collectively over three years with it. And you know, I, I've just learned to live with it. So Again, there's, a, there's an aftermarket product that people will talk about that you can plug in and, and override this system, but it's not something I would recommend or, or could recommend because it's not an OEM product that Subaru, Subaru provides and I don't know how it impacts the vehicle. So I would hate for you to put that on your car and then something mess up. Speaking of the auto start stop system and the fuel savings, Michael Merritt asks, I have a 22 Onyx, great vehicle by the way. I was wondering about the total hours and gas saved on the auto start stop. Well, I'm sitting in my Outback now conveniently, so let's take a look at the dash and show you guys how much fuel I've saved with the auto start stop feature. To access this, you're gonna use these controls here on the center display, and we're gonna to toggle through till we see the auto start stop icon, and this shows you the fuel savings. Now, I just got my oil changed, my first oil changed, and so I reset this, but I'm going to use the trip reset button down here toggle over. I've had this on since, I haven't reset this since I got the car. So you'll see over the course of 5,664 miles, I have saved 2.2 gallons of gas. You'll also see that it's been off for a total of four hours and 48 minutes. You could argue that saving approximately two gallons of gas is not that significant. It's definitely not significant financially, but in terms of what you're putting out into the environment, your engine has been shut off for a total of almost five hours over the course of 5,000 miles. Like that sounds pretty significant if you think about your car running consistently for five hours straight. Now, I don't know the science behind it, but I'm sure somebody could do that math for you and tell you what kind of impact it has on the environment. It's cool to know you have a way to track it and you know it does help you get a little bit better fuel economy. The next question is from Brenda S. Hey Alex, I have a question. What do we do if we wanna go through the car wash? Somebody said you have to turn things off. Is that true? If so, can you please show me? I actually made a previous video. It was one of my first videos here on YouTube and as I was kind of learning Subarus and I did mention in that video that you should at least know how to turn some of these safety features off, primarily your pre-collision automatic braking if you're going through 
the automatic car wash. However, I have recently learned with having my own Outback and driving it through an automatic car wash that you don't always have to turn those features off, but it is still nice to know how to turn them off in the event that you need to turn them off for any reason. Osumra asks, when will the 2022 Outback Wilderness get the update to have the updated HVAC controls? I've been asked many questions here on YouTube about this because back in September, I made a video talking about the new things that were coming for the 23 Outback. And I did mention in that video that previous generation, the 2020 through 2022 Outbacks will get a retroactive update to have this same design layout. Well, unfortunately, now I don't know if that's going to be the case. Subaru hasn't released any further details. The only thing I have to go off of is our Subaru training video, but the uh, all they say is that some of the upgrades from the 23 would be carried over to the previous gen. They didn't specify which ones, and I made that assumption based on a conversation I had with somebody at Subaru who maybe was just also assuming that we would get it, but Unfortunately, they have not given me any uh, definitive details or answers on whether or not we're going to get it, and if so, when that will happen. It is something, though, that I think would be, it's possible to add. I don't know how easy it is. I'm not a software engineer, but the when the 2020 Outback first came out, the auto start stop button used to be buried inside the touchscreen display, and then Subaru later with a software update moved that to the main screen where it's always living on the main screen, easier to get to for uh, people who want to shut it off quickly each time they start their car. So that was done with a software update. Now that's not as big, I think, as moving the layout design, but you know, you've got iPhone updates and Android updates. Our smartphones get updates like that all the time that reconfigure the design and the layout of our screens and our apps and, and how they look. So I don't think it's out of question. I think that it's possible. And they mentioned that there would be a retroactive upgrade for the previous gen that the 2023s have. And surely they're not just talking about speed and performance. I'm gonna make a video on this a little bit more detail soon, just to share what I know, but that's pretty much all I know right now. I don't know if we're going to get that update anymore. And if so, I don't know when it'll be, but as soon as I have that update, I am going to be posting about it. So subscribe if you like to keep updated with that. That covers it for today's video. I know I went over quite a few questions with you guys. I hope you enjoyed and found something new or learned something new in today's video. As always, be sure to click the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe down below. Hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next one.